All right, we're here at the Humanoid Summit, and we're here with Khan, who is the CEO of Reeve Robotics. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the name Weave has something to do with fabric and textile, which probably is the reason why we are seeing the bot behind us mm -hmm. actually folding t-shirts. That's right. Um, I worked a lot with textile and fabrics, and uh, I was just fascinated by the act of weaving. So, and we definitely like the feel that it gives, this like soft and comfortable, homey feel, as opposed to like a metal sharp thing. And at the same time, we envision a future where humans and robots are just going to be woven in uh, and not necessarily like a robot goes into your home and it just disrupts your home, essentially. And that's why we chose the name. Right. And of course, you probably know that when everyone started talking about humanoid bots, the first application where it says, I wanted to fold my t-shirts. Mm -hmm. And so here we're seeing the application that's actually doing it. Mm -hmm. There's two aspects to it. First, you needed to come up with hardware to do it. That's right. But the second, you needed the brains. That's right. So which aspects do you want to talk about as being more important or how you're able to conquer that? I mean, we can talk about both aspects. Uh, it really, we approach this problem from the ground up because for us, the most important thing is that we build a product that just works, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we thought about this pretty holistically. We designed the hardware from the ground up so that it can be affordable, easy to assemble, easy to deploy. Um, so that we can deploy a ton of these things mm -hmm. and collect a ton of data, but at the same time, so that they can run like 10 plus hour days without somebody being there to baby it in person. Right. These robots don't fall over, they don't overheat, they run basically as long as we can give them t-shirts for. Yes. Yeah. And that ties in very, very well with the ML portion of this piece because we collect a ton of data this way. Um, since we've designed our robots in-house, we control the joint configuration. We can optimize our robot along with the protocol to make the task as easy to learn as possible without sacrificing the fold quality. Mm -hmm. And yeah, That's pretty good. It undid the neck there. Yeah. And then at the end of all of this, we have our own uh, VLA architecture with mm -hmm. our own training pipeline that we input all of this data in along with a bunch of other data that we have and basically get like the autonomous behavior that you see today. Yes, okay, so for anyone who comes to San Francisco, they can actually see this live, right? That's right, yeah. Um, our robots are already deployed in laundromats and laundry facilities. And uh, we actually, you know, if there's people in San Francisco where uh, we have a robot in sea breeze cleaners mm -hmm. in Noe Valley, and yeah. um, it's basically folding laundry for paying customers every day. And okay. uh, we encourage people to drop by and take a look. Sure, at robots. sure. So um, this, one thing about robots, they're not made up out of parts. They're made up of, out of, of philosophy. That's right. So you've got a certain philosophy, a design philosophy going in here. First, you're saying it has to be scalable, which means it needs to be cheap. It's going to be around people. So you want to make sure it's kind of safe. And also looking at the particular application, you don't want more degrees of freedom than you need. That's right. So there's two places that you can attack that. One is the hand. You can decide how many degrees of freedom do you actually need out there. Mm -hmm. And I've come to realize that when you're thinking about dexterity, dexterity lies more in the head than it does in the hand. That's so right. it shows you can have fewer degrees of freedom than we would think of as people who are five fingered and do everything with it. And a lot of it goes there. But you also take it a little bit more because most of the humanoid arms we're seeing are seven doff arms. Mm -hmm. But that's more than you need. That's right. And you've designed your shoulder a little bit different than others. Mm -hmm. You've almost given it a scapula more than a shoulder joint. That's right. And what that does is it gives you this nice big work. Exactly. I was noticing earlier, it had to come like way out here. Normally that wouldn't have happened, but because of the rotation of that, you were able to get you a know, really far, far reach. It's such a happy moment when uh, somebody just observes and realizes like the reason behind the decisions yes. that you've made. Yes. And you're yes. exactly right, because at the end of the day, we want to not just be the company that folds t-shirts, right? We are already doing pants. We're doing long sleeves. Uh, you know, real laundry doesn't come in this neatly shaped workspace, right? And you also made a really good point that it's um, obviously more degrees of freedoms can make certain tasks easier to do. Right. Right. But at the end of the day, um, it is very important to actually learn to use the degrees of freedom that we have, right? We obviously have a ton of degrees of freedom ourselves, but um, you know, as you can see but, here- this but Sometimes it, it gets in the way. So the shoulder design does one thing with the elbow. Yes. It's it really elbow redundancy. That's which right. means you don't do the thing that you walk through the crowd like that. That's right. So you're keeping your elbow right in there. That ties into safety. Yeah. And that ties into safety. And 
practicality, we ensure basically like the footprint of the robot is known at any given time, yeah. right? Because uh, our robots are deployed in unstructured environments, right? The, the version that you see is a stationary base, also a reason for that, right? And um, yeah, we're approaching this very pragmatically mm -hmm. Uh, without sacrificing capability okay. from so, day one. So it's a stationary base, so it's not a wheeled base. So this version in particular is stationary. It's a pared down version of a whole uh, body version that way. Right, have. right. So you, you can have two versions of the base of the robot. Mm -hmm. You can make it mobile because it needs to be mobile. Exactly. Or you can just put like little wheels on it with brakes that makes it deployable. Yes. So for the most part, it just needs to be in front of here. So I don't need mobility, I just need deployability. That's right. And that's really what you're set up for. That's and the other right. thing that we may not have noticed is it is able to go up and down. So it's able to change its height, which is all right. key. Yeah. And um, so these were all design decisions that we made early on. Mm -hmm. We're especially think it's extremely important for the robot to be able to go up and down, not just to be able to like handle surfaces at different heights, mm -hmm. but also for the, the mobile version of the robot that I mentioned. It's very important, especially when these robots go in homes, that they are fully compact when they're not in use, right? And they're not like a huge thing in your living room taking up space. Yeah. But at the same time, super important to be able to reach the floor and fall cabinetry. And they're very stable. It, it's statically stable. It's not going to fall over. And the other thing I've sort of noticed here is that carbon composites right there That's right. makes the whole structure very, very light. Yes. A lighter bot means what? A lighter bot means uh, higher payloads, higher safety, mm -hmm. um, higher stability, Less complexity in the base, uh, stationary base becomes possible. Smaller actuators. That's right. Less reflective Lower inertia, power. everything else. So yeah. if you can lighten the load there, it gets a lot better. Exactly. But at the same time, we can see the stability because everyone knows a triangle is like the strongest structure in nature. So you're built around that. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I mean, this is the thing it's a lot of very nice engineering design decisions. Robots are built on philosophy, not parts. Completely agree. Okay. Thank you yeah. for your time, Khan. Of course. Great chatting. Okay. Thanks. Yeah.